I wanted to start by commenting on today's first reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. So Jeremiah is prophesying that God will restore, reestablish the people of Israel. This is after they're taken into, taken into exile because they had rebelled from God. And there's a very beautiful passage here. Notice how it says, um, God says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. And this is in reference to the people of Israel. So even though they have been disobedient, even though they have been unfaithful, God continues to be faithful. So God never abandons us. We abandon God. We turn our back on God. But God's love is always there for all of us. Now, in today's gospel reading, we have an account of this Canaanite woman whose daughter is tormented by a demon. And notice how she calls after our Lord, but our Lord just ignores her. And our Lord points out that he was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And it's important that we reflect on this. So why did our Lord say this? Why was it that he was only sent to the lost sheep of Israel? Now, we know when we look at the Gospels, occasionally he would, you know, do a miracle for the centurion or the centurion slave or whatever, right? So he did deal with others who were not of Jewish background, but he came primarily for the Jewish people. And it's because God, over the centuries prior to that, had been preparing the Jewish people revealing things to them about God, uh, God's relationship with them, but also in regards to the moral law. And this is very important. So in the Gentile nations, there was great immorality. They had all kinds of wrong views about their gods or, or God in general, but they're very immoral. In other words, they were not prepared for the gospel message. So it would take more time. And we see in the early church, even in the letters of St. Paul, he's writing and sometimes addressing some of the immoral practices that were taking place and some of it which was kind of creeping into the church or the, the communities that St. Paul had founded. So he's trying to correct these things. And, and so it takes more time. And basically when our Lord appears on the scene, he's only, you know, his public ministry is only for three years. So there was no time to do this. So basically... Our Lord, you know, we can also say he knew what he was going to do. He knew that this wood woman would keep persisting. He knew that he would eventually give in to her request. But it's almost as if this miracle is being wasted. Why? Because she doesn't believe that he's the Messiah. She doesn't even know what the Messiah is all about. So she may have just heard, oh, there's this great miracle worker and he's casting out demons. Your daughter has a demon? Go see this man. So she goes to him and she manifests great faith, but also great humility. She kind of um, equates herself with dogs that kind of eat the scraps from the master's table. So our Lord grants her this miracle. And then the reason I said, you know, maybe it's just a wasted miracle. I mean, it's only speculation. We don't know what happened. Hopefully the woman converted and, and started, you know, practicing true Christianity and, and living a morally upright life. But in other words, she would have gone back to her home and her daughter as well. And maybe she just continued to live her life the way she always did and praying to the false gods and all these things. So we don't know. But this is probably why our Lord refused to initially grant the miracle. Some have argued that our Lord, knowing what he was going to do, purposely ignored her so that she would cause a commotion and draw more attention to what our Lord was going to do. Now, some people have asked the question, can we change the mind of God? You know, the um, scholastics, they... they pondered all kinds of questions, you know, how many angels can dance on the head of a pin or something like that, right? And just kind of speculative questions. So one question that sometimes people ponder is, can we change the mind of God? 
And it seems that in today's gospel reading, this woman changes the mind of God, changes the mind of Jesus. In other words, Jesus is initially saying, no, I'm not going to do this miracle. I was sent only for the lost sheep of Israel. But he does the miracle. So the answer to that question, can we change the mind of God, is really yes. And I'm not basing this answer just on today's gospel reading. When we look at the lives of the saints, the saints performed all kinds of great miracles. And if it wasn't for those saints, those miracles wouldn't have happened. Now keep in mind that all the miracles occur through the power of God. And because these saints are so close to God, God will often hear their prayers, their requests, even if it's very extreme. And I wanted to relate to you in, uh, in regards to one particular saint, St. Philip Neri. I know a little bit about him because I studied at the oratory, which is, um, you know, what the, the um, congregation that St. Philip Neri established. So we had a lot of readings about St. Philip. And on a number of occasions in his life, he brought back individuals from the dead. Now, granted, it's not like Lazarus, who was dead for four days. These individuals had just died, but St. Philip prayed, and they came back from the dead. And the point is that when someone dies, that's God's will. That's God's plan. You know, when we die, you know, no matter what circumstances we die under, God is going to give us the grace that we need. And it's really part of God's providence. In other words, when we die will be the best time for us to die. And so we shouldn't fear death. What we need to do when we are dying is to turn to God. But anyways, St. Philip on more than one occasion brought individuals back from the dead. And on one of those occasions, it was a young boy who died, and he was a very good boy. He was a very pious boy. And St. Philip brought him back to life. And later on in his life, St. Philip lamented the fact that he revived this boy and brought him back to life, that he opposed God's will in allowing this boy to die. Why? Because as this boy got older, he rebelled against God and died not in a state of grace, but in a, in a state separated from God. So St. Philip regretted that he had asked God to change the course of, of nature in this case. So, yes, there are miracles and, you know, it's, it's a very hypothetical question, you know, what does God intend by allowing certain things to happen? And, you know, yes, God knows the miracles that he's going to work. And it's all for the good. And we should realize that whenever we suffer, there's some good that we can draw out from it. God will give us the graces that we need. But the whole point is that if we are as holy as the saints, we have the ability even to change the mind of God. That's incredible. And in the case of this, this woman, this Canaanite woman, well, she's not a great saint. But she persists in her prayer. She prays with great faith. And she's extremely humble. And often what's lacking for us is strong faith, but also and especially humility. We are all prone to pride. If we root it out in one area of our lives, it often pops up in another area, and often we don't even realize it. So if you want your prayers to be effective, more efficacious, more powerful, pray with great faith, pray with persistence, but be humble. Just a brief announcement. Um, this Friday is the first Friday of the month, so after the 7.30 evening Mass, we will have the all-night vigil of adoration once again.